Hello and welcome to a brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial, this time taking a look at some of the brand new rules features inside of Final Cut 10.3. We're going to look at how to actually create a new role and then how to change the colour of that role. Now why might you want to do this? Well let's say we are adding music to our film but we're using some music files from another movie, let's say the Harry Potter soundtrack. We may find it really useful to really clearly visually identify which music files we cannot keep in our final mix. So by creating a new role and changing the color of it, we're gonna really clearly be able to see which music files we need to get rid of before we actually export our finished film. So let's grab a audio file from our event browser and we're gonna add it to our timeline. And we're going to pretend that this file is, as I mentioned earlier, maybe from Harry Potter. So we need to be able to um, distinguish it. So if we right click and press assign audio roles, scroll to the bottom and press edit roles, this is going to bring up our role editor. Now this role editor is specific to the current library that you're working on. So you're only affecting the current library, not every single future project you're gonna work on inside of Final Cut Pro 10, which is useful to know. You can see I've already added one custom one, the color correction filter, and we wanna add a new music role. So if we press this plus button here, this is gonna create a new role for us. By default, it will be a different color, and we can name this temp music. Now once we've done that, we can press apply, and it appears like it hasn't actually done anything. Now what we've only done is we've created the role, we now need to assign it. So if we right click again, and we choose assign audio roles, and if we scroll to the bottom, you'll now see our new role, which is the temp music, and when we select that, it's going to apply that role to the music track. And you can see it's changed color and it's also knocked it down in the timeline. Now, why might it do that? Well, Final Cut will organize all your roles for you. It makes sure that nothing collides, but it also will organize things based on how they're organized in the timeline index. Now, if you can't see the timeline index, then just press this index button up here and you click on all the tabs, make sure you've got the roles tab selected. And then we can see the hierarchy of our roles. And by dragging the role, right up to the top for instance, that's going to move every single uh, track that has that role assigned above everything else. So you can see it now sits above the dialogue, the effects and the music tracks that we already had in there. And then we can move it say above the music tracks, uh, sorry, above the music role, which is going to be pretty useful because then we can at least very clearly see any temp tracks that we need to get rid of um, above the tracks that we're allowed to keep. Now you'll notice if we look in the event browser, it's still green. So the fact that this file is still green means that the role hasn't actually been assigned to it in the event. In order to do that, we need to right click, press assign audio roles and scroll to the bottom and we can choose temp music. Now you'll see that it's actually changed the icon green up here. And if we switch to thumbnail view, you can see that that file is pink. So you'll notice that when we actually assign the role in the timeline, it's only actually affecting that instance of the file. We have to assign it in the event browser in order for it to universally affect that file. And you see now when we've added it to the timeline, it's already uh, this pink shade because we assigned it in the event browser. If we take a look at these two files side by side, you'll notice they are the same sound effect file. If we right click on one of them, right click and choose assign audio role, and then we can assign it the temp music track, you'll now notice that only that single instance has been turned pink. The identical file next to it is still has still has the same role. So anything we do in the timeline only affects that instance of the file. Additionally, if we want to actually change the color ourselves, um, whether that's purely for our own personal aesthetic tastes, uh, we can open up the the roles and we can hover over the role and we can press this color icon and then choose a new color and we can change all of these to whichever ones we so wish so thank you very much for watching hopefully this has been useful uh, sorry for my absence i've been working on some really exciting feature film projects including my own which you'll hear about soon 
and I have the privilege to be able to share some of my experiences working on this current film, The Curse of Frau Perkta, with you now, as long as I don't give any away, well, any spoilers. So I'll be back soon with some very new tutorials, taking a look at some more roles features as well as other features in 10.3. If you guys have any questions, any particular tutorials you'd like to see, leave it in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.